Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. We begin with the name of Allah, asking for his help, asking for his blessings, and asking for his protection. We praise Allah, we thank him, and we glorify him. We ask him to bless his messenger Muhammad, to elevate his mention and rank, and to shower him with protection and grace. Welcome to another episode of Prayer Malpractice, where we are learning how to pray and how not to pray. Uh, we've gone through several episodes giving an introduction of how can we make our prayer acceptable, how can we make our prayer valid, how can we fulfill the preconditions of prayer and ensure that we get a positive response by it being acceptable to God Almighty and by it bringing about fruit. Today we're going to start with the crux of the matter and the actual topic which we titled this whole series uh, under prayer malpractice so we're going to start with defining how can prayer be practiced in a wrong way now the arabic subject matter is al-i'tida'u fi dua al-i'tida'u fi dua which is the title of this whole book that we are reading together. So we're going to start by speaking on the word al-i'tida. What does this word actually mean? So we start with its linguistic meaning, and this is what the scholars of Islam typically do. They will define words linguistically, and then they will define them technically or based on the specific field of knowledge that they are discussing. So. Um, Al-i'tida comes from al-adwu, which comes from al-tajawuz, which is to move ahead of something. Tajawaza is to go outside of the bounds. Another definition is ظلمهُ ظُلْمًا جَاوَزَ فِيهِ الْقَدْرَ ظلمهُ So the word ظُلْم, which is to do wrong to someone to do wrong to someone, to wrong them. And so this is the definition of al to wrong someone, to transgress. That's literally what it is, is to transgress and to trespass. Jawaza fi al-qadr, to go outside of the bounds, to go outside of the boundaries. And it was said that al-udwan, udwan is another word that is similar it's worse than al it's worse than al and allah says uh, whoever does so it was speaking about some wrongdoing it says whoever does so out of spite udwan and, and out of enmity and out of wrongdoing and transgression, then Allah will expose them to the punishment of the fire. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ We see in the Qur'an Allah again discussing a particular group of people and some of their wrongdoing and Allah is telling them, you are a people who do who are عَادُون which means مُعْتَدُون You are transgressing, you are uh, wrongdoing, you are committing an injustice. Um, so those are some of the meanings of al-i'tida. Al-i'tida mujawazatu al-haq. Al-i'tida is to go beyond the truth, to go beyond that which is just. And Allah says, Ud'u Rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. This is a passage that I want us all to be very familiar with because our whole series is built on this passage from the Quran. Al A'raf 55, chapter 7, passage 55. Ud'u Rabbakum, call unto your Lord, worship your Lord tadarru'an wa khufya, with devotion and with a quiet voice, a silent voice. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Surely Allah does not like and does not love those who trespass and those who go 
beyond the boundaries. Um, we spoke about that already. So to do wrong, to misplace something and to go outside of its appropriate boundaries. Do not go outside of these bounds. And this is what Allah said. Those are the boundaries of Allah. Those are the commandments of Allah. Those are the prohibitions of Allah. Do not trespass them. When Allah describes that group of people and He says, they are the ones who trespassed, the trespassers. What is that referring to? They trespassed the limits that have been set forth for them and the commandments that they were given. So again, the root of this word, al-i'tida, is mujawazatul al-haddi wal-qadri wal-haqqi. It is to go outside of, number one, al-had, which is the limit, the border, the boundary. Al-qadr, the volume of something, the amount of something. So when you do something exceeding the amount that was prescribed for you, that would be tajawuz. And then wal-haq, which is the truth or justice. So whenever you go outside of the truth, you go outside of the amount that was set forth for you, or you go outside of the limits and the boundaries, that is called al-i'tida. The Messenger وسلم, is quoted to have said, سَيَكُونُ قَوْمٌ يَعْتَدُونَ فِي الدُّعَاءِ There will come a group of people who will trespass and transgress and do prayer wrong. They're going to go outside of the set boundary, boundaries of prayer. They're going to go outside of the volume of prayer and the amount of prayer. How do they define that? They say, How can you do so with prayer? They say, it is to leave off the legislated prayer, the prayer that has been taught to us in the Sharia, ah, and to leave off the prophetic tradition in prayer. That would be called التعدي في الدعاء. When Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ المعتدين are those who have gone far beyond what was set for them, what was prescribed for them, what was commanded of them when it came to prayer. Um, so then you have another word which is similar to al-i'tida called at-ta'addi. At-ta'addi which is to move from one place to something else. So when you're switching lanes, you are on your lane. When you say ta'addaytuhu, you're going to another lane. You're switching lanes from one place to the other and you're crossing it. Um, and also, let's say when you are in a race. So in a race, people all start from the same starting point, but eventually you're going to uh, either be, uh, you're going to go ahead of someone. So going ahead of someone is called ta'addi. Ta'addi could be to go ahead of someone to another spot or another location or another degree. Al-ida'u is al-dhulmu wa tajawuz al-had to do wrong, to do injustice, and to do some, to miss uh, treat someone because you have appropriate treatment and whenever you mistreat someone, that's called al-ida. And this is where this narration comes in. سَيَكُونُ قَوْمٌ يَعْتَدُونَ فِي الدُّعَاءِ There will come a group of people who will do wrong, who will malpractice, who will mistreat, who will go outside of the set boundaries of prayer. Al-Khuruju fihi an al-wad'i al-shar'iyi wa sunnati al-ma'thura. To go outside of the legislated teachings of prayer and to go outside of the prophetic tradition which we have inherited. So, to sum up everything that we just mentioned, it, 
The definition of al-i'tida'u fi dua is mujawazatu al-haddi fi. Prayer has been prescribed in a certain way. And we're talking about petitionary prayer here specifically. It has been legislated and taught in a certain way. Once a person goes outside of that boundary, goes outside of those limits that were set forth by Allah, that's called التعدي or الاعتداء في الدعاء. May Allah protect us from that. So that's the linguistic meaning. Now we're going to come down to a more specific definition, which is the technical definition. What the scholars coin, التعريف الاصطلاحي. How do the scholars, the jurists understand this particular topic and how do they define it? الاعتداؤ في الدعاء. So this is one definition by Ibn al-Qayyim. He says, الاعتداؤ في الدعاء. Prayer malpractice. هو كل سؤال يناقض حكمة الله. It is every request which contradicts the wisdom of God. ويتضمن مناقضة شرعه وأمره. And it is every request which implies contradicting God's commandments and God's legislation. أو يتضمن خلاف ما أخبر به. Or it's every request that implies going against what Allah has told us about. فَهُوَ اعْتِدَاءٌ لَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَلَا يُحِبُّ سَائِلَهُ It is a wrong prayer that Allah does not love and that Allah does not love the one doing it. So Allah no, neither loves the person saying this prayer nor does He, does he love that request and prayer. وَفُسِّرَ لِعْتِدَاءُ بِرَفْعِ الصَّوْتِ أَيْضًا فِي الدُّعَاءِ He also says there is another definition, another definition of what i'tida means, which is to raise one's voice while making dua. رَفْعُ الصَّوْتِ So to speak loudly whenever you are speaking to God and making a request to say it in a loud voice. قال ابن جرير, ابن جرير, the famous Quran commentator and great polymath, he says, من الاعتداء رفع الصوت في الدعاء. It is a part of اعتداء. So this tells us that اعتداء is so many things. But he says part of it is رفع الصوت في الدعاء. To raise the voice while one is making a prayer. والنداء في الدعاء والصياح and to shout and to scream while making a prayer and a request from God that is a part of اعتداء قال ابن الجوزي so now we have another scholar and all of these again they are to be taken together collectively none of these definitions actually contradict one another what you can see is that each one of them has given us another angle so we can ensure not to fall into prayer malpractice. He says in his book on tafsir, إِنَّ الْإِعْتِدَاءَ فِي الدُّعَاءِ فِيهِ ثَلَاثَةُ أَقْوَالِ So he is another great scholar who has learned and who has studied and who has researched and who has been exposed to many of the other comments of the scholars. So he says, اعتداء في الدعاء has three primary definitions. أن يدعو على المؤمنين بالشر. So the first one is for the individual to pray against the believers with some harm or evil. كالخزي واللعنة. Like for a person to say, may the believers be humiliated or may they be taken out of Allah's grace. لعنة. So this is اعتداء في الدعاء. And unfortunately, again, this is so common. You have so many Muslims, unfortunately, when they have a disagreement with another Muslim, another believer, they don't have a, uh, they don't stop short from cursing them in this way and asking God to humiliate them or asking God to take them out of His grace and mercy. Two, the second meaning is أن يسأل ما لا يستحقه من منازل الأنبياء. For the individual to request the things that the person does not deserve. ما لا يستحقه. Does not deserve or does not qualify for. There are certain things that we do not qualify for. What is the definition? 
of what you don't qualify for? The stations of the messengers. We will not have Manazilul Anbiya. We will not be messengers. The messengers of Allah are selected by Him. So I cannot ask Allah, Oh Allah, make me of the messengers or grant me the station of the messengers in the next life. That is not something that would be appropriate to do. And then the third meaning of i'tida, he says, إِنَّهُ الْجَهْرُ فِي الدُّعَاءِ To pray in a loud voice, to shout it and to scream it, to be loud when one prays. That's a type of i'tida fi dua trespassing and transgressing and wrongdoing and miss praying and malpractice of prayer. Then we move on to a few other definitions from scholars and that's why I'm mentioning the scholar's name. Al-Kalbi wa ibn Jurayj, they say, إِنَّهُ رَفْعُ الصَّوْتِ بِالدُّعَاءِ وَالصِّيَاحِ Their definition is, whenever someone raises their voice loudly and shouts the prayer, that's اعتداء في الدعاء. And again, this is very unfortunate because we see this so often, especially in congregations. Whenever people are doing salah, for example, in witr, qunutul witr in Ramadan, this is something very common. And the person, the Imam, unfortunately, is shouting the prayer and screaming at God. This is completely inappropriate. This is completely inappropriate. It contradicts the command of Allah of praying with devotion and praying in a humble way. It was not the prophetic example to scream and to shout at Allah in prayer. Yes, it may be very common. We may have seen it and witnessed it and experienced it and have been taught it, but this is not the prophetic way. May Allah protect us from that. Another time this happens is again in general gatherings, wherever people want somebody to lead them in prayer, especially someone who's more articulate and someone who's more versed. So they'll start shouting and screaming the dua. Not very appropriate. In fact, it is prayer malpractice. Another definition of al اعتداء في الدعاء, prayer malpractice, هو اختراع دعوة لا أصل لها في الشرع. It is to invent a prayer and a request that does not have any type of foundation and any type of reference within the Sharia, ah, within the Quran and the Sunnah. So to come up with basically a crazy, creative prayer that we don't have a reference for, that does not um, come in line of the revelation of the Quran and the Sunnah. And then another definition is This is very powerful because unfortunately people sometimes become frustrated and they become disappointed. They say, I'm praying but God is not answering my prayer. And my request to people is make sure that you're not doing prayer wrong. You're not doing prayer malpractice. When you look at this particular definition, you see why so many prayers are not responded to. He says, Al-i'tida is for you to ask of Allah that which goes against the universal laws of Allah, where Allah doesn't give those things or does not create those things or does not change and transform certain things. So there are certain things that Allah will not change, certain things that Allah will not bring into existence, certain things that Allah will not grant. So for you to ask Allah those things and they conflict with the foundations that Allah has set in the universe, the laws of the universe, this would be inappropriate for you to do. So for example, one of the things that we can all relate to is the law of gravi gravity. That's a universal law that Allah has placed in the universe. For you to ask Allah to allow you to defy gravity would be inappropriate and would be prayer malpractice. For you, after you have known, for example, that you have been uh, granted um, the inability to bear children and there is nothing that you can do to 
fix that problem, for you to continue to pray to God to make you have children. Let's say a person does, a woman has some type of um, surgery and because of the surgery, they had to remove her uterus, which is the place where having a child um, in the body, that's, or a woman does not have, um, does not have um, any of the reproductive system, or a man for that, uh, you know, as, as well. So for that individual who does not have the reproductive system, to ask Allah to grant them a child in that situation, a biological child at that, using their own bodies at that, this would be going against something that is very clear cut and something that is not allowed to ask for. So many a times we ask for things that are not typical in the way that Allah has um, ordained and in the way that Allah deals with His creation. So this is something important to, to consider. Another definition of Al-I'tida' هو تجاوز الحد الذي حده الله لعبده في دعائه ومسألته ربه. And this is a beautiful definition, but the definition is going to require explanation. He says تجاوز الحد. So to go outside of the bounds and the limits that Allah has set for His servants in prayer and in requests from their Lord. So straight off the bat, we should come to understand that Allah has set limits for prayer. We should not say that there are no limitations to prayer. No, there are limitations to prayer. Just because you wanna say something that makes people feel good is not actually appropriate. You must ensure that what you ask for is within the boundary that Allah has set for His servants. Another definition, al-i'tida'u, هو تجاوز الحد الذي حده الله لعباده إلى غيره. It is to cross the bounds that Allah has set forth for His servants and to go to something other than that. So to have an alternative to the boundaries that Allah has set. وكل ما تجاوز حد شيء إلى غيره فقد تعداه إلى ما جاوزه إليه. This is kind of just defining, adding the linguistic definition into the technical definition. It says, whenever something goes outside of its bounds, then it has actually, uh, it has actually done ta'addi and passed it. Just like we said, when you switch from one lane to the other. So if Allah told you, this is the lane of prayer, if you decide to change and switch lanes, you're doing ta'addi fi dua The summary of all of these definitions is the following. So this is really what we want to come out with, with this particular subject, which is defining prayer malpractice. What is this series all about? It says, تَجَاوُزُ الْحَدِّ الشَّرْعِيِّ فِي الدُّعَاءِ مَعْنًا أَوْ لَفْظًا أَوْ أَدَاءً أَوْ هَيْئَةً So there are going to be four things here. And this is what we're going to comment on in the next episodes. تجاوز الحد الشرعي To go outside and to cross the limits and the boundaries that Allah has set forth in the Sharia. In relation to prayer, to petitionary prayer, either by way of the meaning, meaning what are you asking for? Or lafzan, the actual words that you're using. So the first thing is to go outside of the bounds in the meaning of the prayer. The second one is to go outside of the bounds that Allah set in the word choice. The third is in the process, ada'an. Ada'an, how do you pray? And the fourth is hay'atan, the description of the prayer, which is similar to the how. But ada is performance and hay'a is image or shape. So there are four things where people cross the bounds and they set limits of the Sharia when it comes to prayer. Either by asking for wrong meanings or using the wrong words 
or using the wrong performance or using the wrong description of prayer. And we're going to break those down in the coming episodes. So what are the different ways of الاعتداء في الدعاء Prayer malpractice. Number one, it is الاعتداء في المعاني The words that you're using have specific meanings. What are you asking for? What meanings are you asking for? You can actually ask for wrong things because the meanings are inappropriate. That's the first one. Second one is الاعتداء في الألفاظ the word choice that you are using is something that is wrong. You're using the wrong words. Thirdly, الاعتداء في الهيئة والأداء. You are doing du'a wrong in the how, in the description, in the performance. So the way you're performing it and the way you are doing it, the way you are saying it. Fourthly, الاعتداء في الدعاء المكاني Going over the bounds, transgressing, trespassing the limitations that Allah has placed for specific dua as it relates to locations. So there are certain locations where we have certain prayers that are prescribed. When you take those prayers to another location, it would be اعتداء. And fifthly, الاعتداء في الدعاء الزماني For a person to go outside of the bounds that are set forth in time-sensitive prayers. There are certain prayers that are time-sensitive. We already know, for example, that salah, the prescribed ritual devotion, is time-sensitive. It must fit in a particular time window. But we are not talking about salah here. We're talking about a dua, petitionary prayer. So that has also certain time windows. There are specific prayers that have certain time windows and certain uh, uh, certain events that they should be set at. So when you go outside of those prescribed times and events, then you are trespassing and transgressing and doing prayer wrong. Um, now, before we enter into greater detail, before we get into greater detail, it's important to um, highlight that الاعتداء في الدعاء is inappropriate as we said, but it has different degrees. It has different levels. They're not all on one level. And this is important to consider. Just like good deeds have different levels and different degrees, just like bad deeds and sins have different levels and different degrees. So when it comes to sins, we have major sins and we have minor sins. We have certain sins that can actually be blasphemous and take a person outside of the fold of Islam. And other sins are human errors. And there is a whole variety. There is a whole selection of bad deeds. Here, al-i'tida fi dua is definitely not positive, but it has different degrees as well. So some aspects of prayer malpractice can make a person commit an act of blasphemy. It could be a shirk al-akbar. And then there are some which are haram, explicitly prohibited. And then there are some which are makruh, which means legally disliked. So as you see, there are different levels of prayer malpractice. They're all negative, but there are degrees of negativity or severity of the offense. So again, we're going to summarize and then we'll get into details in the next episode. الاعتداء في الدعاء Prayer malpractice may take place with the wrong word choice or with the wrong concepts and things that one is requesting or in the shape and the how and the performance of the prayer or in the time of the prayer, or in the place of the prayer. And each one of these sections will be elaborated on. Um, some people will say, I don't accept this. You're just 
coming up with this. I'm not going to accept that you're saying there is prayer, prayer, prayer mal malpractice. Because God is able to do all things. Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah is able to do all things. And whenever a person prays, Allah is able to fulfill their wishes and their dreams and their prayers and their requests. Some people say that. God is able to do all things. So there is no limits to what you can pray for. The reality, however, is that if you know anything about Islam, you realize that Allah has placed certain universal laws and certain legislative laws in our lives. And we are not permitted to break those commandments and to break those laws. That's not something that we are allowed to do. And that's why this subject requires for us to be more literate Islamically. Many people are very illiterate. They were told when they were kids, you can ask God for anything. And they took that on and they never actually developed. They never developed in their understanding of what God is and how He operates in the universe. They didn't do that. So they have a very shallow understanding of things. So yes, Allah is able to bring about a child without a human being going through the normal stages of having intimacy with a spouse and intercourse and reproducing. And the example of that is Isa alayhi salam. Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, Christ, the Messiah, Allah created him without the particular process that other human beings come to existence through with two parents, a mother and a father. Now, although Allah was able to do that, and Allah in fact did that, He has placed for us a particular process to fulfill whenever we want to have children, which is to get married and to get married to a person of the opposite gender and to uh, do intimacy according to the laws and the regulations and the commandments of God. Likewise, yes, it is within Allah's ability to provide for you and I, even if we are sitting at home without working, without earning a living, without striving in life. But Allah has told us through His natural laws in the universe and through the legislative laws in the Sharia ah, that in order for you to get your provisions which Allah has already set forth for you, you must strive, you must work, you must exert effort. And anyone who has intellect should never think that the things that Allah has told us about are going to come about without the process that Allah has demanded of us. And if somebody thinks that, then they would be having bad manners and, bad, um, and, and, and a bad understanding of Allah. This is actually called su'ul adab. Whenever we talk about this topic of adab and manners, people think about human interactions. You say somebody has manners, somebody lacks manners. Some people lack manners in the way they deal with Allah. And some people lack manners in the way they pray to Allah. So although prayer is supposed to be something good, but if somebody's doing it with bad manners, then they're actually lacking in respect and of reverence of Allah. So that concludes this particular episode where we covered how prayer malpractice is defined. We gave the linguistic meaning of it, and we gave the technical meaning of it, and then we broke it down for further elaboration. That prayer malpractice is whenever someone goes outside of the legislated form of prayer. Whether it's in the intended request, or the word choice, or the process and the how and the performance, or the time or the place. So prayer malpractice can take place 
in multiple ways. And we said that prayer malpractice has multiple degrees as well. Some may cause a person to commit blasphemy and get them out of the fold of Islam, God forbid. And some is forbidden and some is legally disliked. And all of these things are things that we're supposed to refrain from. But it's a good process to understand that they're not all on the same level. And hopefully what we're going to learn here is to be more literate in regards to prayer. So when we pray, we pray right, we pray correctly, we pray in a way that is beloved to Allah. With that, we conclude this particular episode. May Allah grant us all the proper understanding and may He teach us things that will benefit us and things that we can practice so we can draw closer to Him. One of the greatest ways of drawing closer to Allah is to pray to Allah. But we must pray to Allah in a way that's approved by Him, in a way that is prescribed by Him, in a way that He loves. And we must not perform prayer in a wrong way. We must not trespass and transgress and alternate and give ourselves an alternative to what Allah has chosen for us. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. We ask you Allah to help us to remember you and mention you at all times, to be grateful to you for all your blessings through our words and through our deeds and by using the blessings you've given us in a way that is pleasing to you. And we ask you to help us to worship you in the most excellent of ways, according to the model and the example of your beloved Messenger Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam. We ask you Allah to bless the Messenger Muhammad, to elevate his mention and rank and to shower him with protection and grace, along with his family and his righteous followers. Assalamu alaikum. Until next time, I fare you well and leave you under the protection of Allah.